Hi, my name is Mike Heinem. I'm the managing attorney at Heinem Law in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about special needs trusts. Trusts are often created for various reasons. Sometimes they're created to hold real estate. Other times they're created for the purpose of holding assets for the benefit of children in the future and many other reasons. Special needs trusts are a, a, a just that, a special type of trust for people with special needs. Those who may be disabled, those who may have autism, uh, sometimes people with severe mental retardation, and others who are not necessarily able to care for themselves. The benefit of a special needs trust, or at least the primary benefit, is that you're able to put the money aside and still, in many instances not impact that person's ability to receive public benefits such as Medicaid, SSI, Medicare, and other potential possible public benefits. There are several types of special needs trusts. There are self-funded trusts, there are third-party trusts, and there are pooled trusts. The self-funded trust would be money from the person's own income, such as in the event of someone who has a severe accident and has a settlement payment put aside and put into trust. A third party trust would be something like parents who get a life insurance policy that when they pass away, the life insurance proceeds go to fund the trust. And a pooled trust is money that is put aside and invested and sort of commingled almost like a mutual fund. When, when special needs trusts are created, you have to t take special care to make sure that the language is drafted in such a way that the person does not have to use that money or have that money counted against income when, or resources when applying for public benefits. If, for example, you are creating a special needs trust and someone is already receiving public benefits, you will have to talk to the welfare department about possibly repaying some or all of the monies that have been paid out on behalf of that person uh, to the welfare program prior to setting up the trust. But if the trust is set up properly and managed properly, it can be a really good resource so that people can have money available to buy things for them like clothing and things they may not otherwise have the money for and still not affect um, their ability to receive public benefits such as uh, welfare. You're also going to need to think about who is going to be the trustee for a special needs trust and that is the person who manages the funds. You can have a personal trustee who could be a brother, a sister, or you could have a corporate trustee, like someone, for example, from a bank. If you're interested in talking about special needs trusts and how they may be of benefit to you or a loved one, please contact me, Mike Heinem, with Heinem Law in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, 717-774-1357, or visit our website at www.heinemlaw.com. Thank you very much for watching.